After over 50 years of suspicion, long, dark nights searching, and theorizing into the unknown, a small glimpse of light was sighted. What could possibly be this far out and still orbiting our sun? history of the Kuiper Belt, uh, it's kind of debated among many other astronomers as to who actually discovered its existence. It was first uh, suggested, I mean, it, the existence of the Kuiper Belt in 1930 by Frederick C. Leonard. He kind of thought that there might be some, uh, a large population of icy objects out beyond the or orbit of Neptune, but no one could really prove his, uh, uh, theory and it was just kind of left at that until uh, Kenneth Edgeworth came along and he uh, theorized that there would just be uh, again you know a large population of objects outside the orbit of Neptune and uh, <clears throat> he put a lot more numbers into it and did a lot more study and uh, he's, he's sometimes credited as uh, the, dis the discoverer of the Kuiper belt um, but it's really hard to give credit to any particular person because there were three or four individuals who theorized the, the existence. The formation of the Kuiper Belt was originally theorized because it's just so far away from the sun. All of the matter that was out there, it couldn't really ever collect into any large object because of the distance between them. So they just kind of collected into a whole bunch of smaller objects. I mean, objects up to a couple thousand kilometers in diameter. I mean, they're, they're quite large, I mean, if they were here right in front of us, but, I mean, in, in talking about sizes of planets and other celestial objects, they're quite small. Um, Dispassionately put, the status of these objects within the Kuiper Belt is a question of classification. What are these dark and mysterious objects, really? The closer we get to the Kuiper Belt, we're able to see that it's composed of tens of thousands of objects we usually call Kuiper Belt objects, or KBOs. 
The discovery of KBOs is obviously fairly recent, and with a wide variety of orbits, sizes, and shapes, there's been a lot of controversy when it comes to what these KBOs are. There's dwarf planets, Cubuanos, Plutoids, Plutinos, Tutinos, and I've even heard Plutons. These are just some of the examples of different classification groups created by astronomers all over the world. In fact, the name Kuiper Belt is only an American term. All Europeans call it the Edgeworth Kuiper Belt because someone else kind of found it about the same time that Gerard Kuiper did. So there hasn't been any real set classification system, and there has been a lot of controversy. So I hope we figure that out soon. So another important name in the history of the Kuiper Belt is Gerard Kuiper. In 1951, again, he suggested the existence of a whole bunch of objects outside of the orbit of Neptune. Anyway, a study of short period or periodic comets was conducted in the 70s, and it was found that the number of periodic comets being found was not consistent with the idea that all the comets were originating from the Oort cloud, which is uh, a region about 50 to 100,000 astronomical units out. In uh, 1980, Julio Fernandez found that a comet belt between 35 and 50 astronomical units must exist to satisfy the number of observed periodic comets. Scott Tremaine followed up on Fernandez's work and with a team of others, they performed a bunch of computer simulations and it matched observations. It is said that because in the opening sentence of Fernandez's paper, Kuiper and Comet Belt is mentioned, Tremaine named it the Kuiper Belt and it kind of has stuck to that name ever since. All looks bleak as we fly even closer. Temperatures drop dramatically. All is dark. The terrain appears to be cold and hard. Even now, the composition of KBOs has been hard to find due to the lack of light we receive from them, and it just they're, they're so far away. Um, from those that we have seen, though, we are able to see that they're completely frozen. With temperatures ranging from 33 Kelvin to 55 Kelvin, you won't be finding much liquid. We have found a lot, a lot of nitrogen. Um, there is also a lot of other light hydrocarbons like methane. Um, there's a lot of ammonia and even a lot of water out there. Well, actually, much of the existence of the Kuiper Belt today is still just theorized. In 1992, we kind of first discovered that an, an object in, of considerable size actually exists out beyond the orbit of Neptune, and that was uh, Pluto. Um, and uh, we've since then discovered about 1,300 other objects that are greater than 100 kilometers in diameter, uh, but it's es estimated that there's over 100,000 of those out there, um, along with the other trillion other up objects inside the Kuiper Belt. Um, otherwise, I mean, mu like I said, much of it's pretty much just theorized, and those are things that we just estimate um, according to uh, many of our calculations that we find. As we delve deep into the realm of the Kuiper Belt, we see a familiar object. This familiar, hard object has been the greatest controversy in astronomy in the last two decades. Although it was discovered years ago, no one ever knew what would come about. Well, as early as 1909, astronomers saw images of Pluto. They just didn't realize that what it was. And in the early 1900s, a man named Percival Lowell searched for years for the so-called Planet X, but he was never able to find it. The discovery is usually attributed to Clyde Tombo, who saw and recognized Planet X in 1930. Pretty soon, suggestions um, came flowing in, but a little 11-year-old girl named uh, Venetia Fair, she suggested the name Pluto after the god of the underworld. And it so just so happened that the first two letters of Pluto are the initials for Percival Lowell, the man who contributed the most to finding Planet X. Just like the other KBOs, the surface of Pluto is 98% nitrogen, with traces of methane, CO2, and even some H2O. 
That is only on the surface, though. After studying the density a bit closer, it appears that the core is most likely just solid rock and surrounded by a mantle of frozen water. Some even theorize that it's some sort of ocean of liquid water is there right, right at the point between the rock and the ice just because of the pressure that's there. But none of that has been proven. It's just speculation. Although much different from other planets in our solar system, Pluto behaves differently than other non-planets in the solar system. Its orbit is widely off from others, and its composition is contrary to intuition. What is Pluto really? What is to become of the beloved ex-planet? As a professional working from NASA stated, the universe is what it is, not what we want it to be. And science must always be open to correcting its mistakes. Could this be one of them? familiar Kuiper Belt object has an eccentricity greater than any planet in the solar system. It is so large that its orbit is sometimes inside of Neptune's. In fact, from 1979 to 1999, Neptune was the farthest from the Sun. It takes Pluto about 248 Earth years to revolve around the Sun once, and the rotation takes about 6.36 Earth days. Towards the other planets. And Eris. 